Okay. Well, we are back again for another installment of Getting to Know Jersey Sound. And today I am joined by the lovely Joanne Mason. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Joanne is our current team leader heading into her second year of being team leader. And uh, we just came off of a wonderful installation dinner and uh, what virtual dinner, bring your own. Yes. And um, had a fun time. And we are super excited to have another year where uh, you get to lead our administrative helm. I'm hoping we finally get to do it in person, but till then, until then, zoom, 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 a zoom. Was there a, a song about that? Um, zoom, 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 a zoom, zoom, a zoom, a zoom, a zoom. I don't know. Well, that's what we do. <laughs> It's what we do. Oh my goodness. How many Zooms have you had this week? How many Zooms have I had this week? Um, yeah, it's it's certainly, <laughs> it's it's a way to do things. Well, and um, so we've been doing these interviews to get to know our members better and to share that information with our adoring public. So first things first, what year did you become a Jersey Sound member? Jersey Sound or? Jersey Sound. Sweet. Jersey Sound, I believe it was 2000 and I'm going to say 13, I think, 2013 or 14. I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah. Because you joined not long after I did. And um, how did you hear about Jersey Sound? Well, I belonged to another chorus and I would always go with the director to the friends and family. And always, you know, I would sit in the audience and I'd, I'd nudge my director and say, why can't we sing that song? Why can't we sing that song? And I, I would sit in awe of the sound. And then when we would go to contest, of course, you'd always see Jersey Sound and always winning a medal. And it's like, wow, I wonder what that feels like. So that was Jersey Sound. But like I said, I started uh, in 2010. And it was actually a Jersey Sound member that recruited me. But I want to go back because I was first introduced, I guess it was probably, would have been about 25 years ago, it was Doris Murdoch. No uh, way. And, yeah. And we happened to work at First Fidelity together. And I, you know, she had said, uh, do you, she knew, although I didn't sing, I would sing at um, different uh, functions for the, the, um, the county that I, I was in the Gloucester County District. And I actually... This was when I became um, the assistant to the regional vice president. So I got to know the managers. And when there would be a retirement or a birthday or something, I would write lyrics. And she would hear me perform. She says, why don't you come sing? I said, well, what do you sing? Would you get a sweet analyze? No, nah, I don't think so. I, I could kick myself because I would probably have been about a 26-year member had I listened to her. But that's neither here nor there, it's water under the bridge. So when I was in ATCO, uh, Jane Hine came in and uh, she just, they just came back from contest. She said, oh, I want a medal. And she went and she got her medal, she showed me. And she said, um, you know, sweet Adeline. Well, oh, that's nice. And she asked me if I like to sing. I said, well, I guess so. And she, you know, she says, would you like to sing with sweet Adeline? I said, nope, no. And, uh, she actually said, well, we could teach you how to stand and how to breathe. And I wanted to improve my posture and, of course, my breathing. So then I asked her, um, you know, what chorus do you sing with? And she said, Jersey Sound. And uh, I asked her how often, and they said once a week. And I said, and where, where do you rehearse? And she sits in and then said, went, nah, too far. No, thanks. And she went, well... A good friend of mine sings with Jersey Sound and another chorus, so I'll hook you up with her and with Sandy Biggs. And that's how I started singing with uh, Sweet Adelines. But it was quite a few, you know, three or four years later before it was finally Jersey Sound. That's quite a story. Just uh, the fact that you had crossed paths with, you know, a few very prominent members of Jersey yeah. Sound. and and how it how it comes to happen it's mm -hmm. that is that's pretty cool i like that i don't know if i knew the doors part um, yeah and it was funny because um i had i remember i had heard her name on on the risers and 
uh, after one rehearsal, I went up to her and I said, uh, Doris Murdoch, did you used to work for First Fidelity? And she said, yeah, I went, Joanne Mixon. And I was, ah! And oh, so that God. was, it's interesting. Well, it's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about what part you sing. I sing bass. Uh, I was little when I was first given the bass part. I was like, I really wanted to sing lead, but boy, I love singing bass. And uh, the director at the time, I said, why did you, uh, you know, tell me to sing bass? She goes, just listening to your voice. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but it is a fun part. I love singing bass. It's, I think basses have the most fun after the leads. Uh, I think before the leads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, my goodness. So, um, well, we talked a little bit about yeah. your his, uh, your history in banking. Uh, so what is your occupation or are you retired or somewhere in the middle? Well, after 24 years with Wells Fargo, I retired, uh, but I wanted to do something. So I had my uh, associate's degree. So I had to go get the, re, uh, I guess the teaching certification through the state, which I did. And I was working for Source for Teachers and I was work different positions with them. And I wound up in uh, Wedg at Wedgwood School in uh, Sewell. And it was sitting before they had doors locked with buzzers, you would sit at a, at a desk at the, in the foyer. And as each person would come in, you would um, you know, greet them, identify them, and then direct them where you wanted to be. And there were lapses where there weren't anybody coming in. And I would sit there, I'd have a book to read. Um, I read The Dome there while I was uh, working. And then uh, it was supposed to be a part-time position. The person that I was filling in for went out on a short-term disability. And the principal said, well, I'll just be one month and it was extended. My, and my, I started in October and it was extended November, December, Janu by January or February, he said it was going to be the rest of the year. So I was source for teachers, but I worked. And he moved me uh, from there, from the front desk, to a position where I was in a first grade class working with a special needs student. And then I was in the cafeteria with, I forget what grade, I didn't, that was my least favorite job in the cafeteria. And then I would be in the nurse's office and I'm one that I ski blood. And here it was with Debbie Cernicola. And I got to the point where I'm cleaning wounds and taking temperatures and doing all that stuff. And then after probably an hour and 20 minutes in her room, I went to a fourth grade class and worked with a special needs student. So that was a very interesting, my time went fast because I was doing so many different things. And at the end of the school year, you know, I went home and I guess it was in early July, one of the, the ladies that I come to know from uh, the cafeteria, she called me and she said, Mr. Landon's gonna call you. And he was the principal at the time. He's gonna offer you a job. So uh, we did play a little telephone tag. And then when I finally got in touch with him, he said, go on the website, you know, send your resume. He said, you have the position. And when I went to HR in Sewell to sign all the papers, the HR person said that I was the first person ever hired that was not interviewed by uh, whoever interviews. And I went back to Wedgwood and uh, you know, I said to Mr. Landon, I said, they told me I was not interviewed. He goes, your performance the whole year was your interview. So I was in a special needs classroom, which was grades one through three. It was a closed closed room and there for quite a few years. And then the, the student that I was working with, her family moved and they moved me to another, a fourth grade classroom. And there I met one of my best friends, the, the teacher there. She was, um, she, she is a phenomenal person, Lisa DeGrazio. And, uh, couple things that she had said that I just because my other classroom I couldn't even drink bottled water the teacher then wouldn't let me and I went into her classroom and I said can I drink bottled water because honey you can drink your coffee you can eat your lunch I don't care 
and it was just so relaxed and very included in um, feedback with the student that I work with. Um, it was just a, a great relationship that I had with, with her and Debbie Fast, who was the other special needs teacher in the classroom. And lucky I was in that classroom for two years. The third year, um, my student, uh, midway through, he, I had to go within the fifth grade and he, uh, he did so well that I didn't have to work with him anymore. He was um, actually released from the special needs prog program. The, um, and what was, what was nice about that um, is he was a student initially who would turn over a desk and really get upset. But we, we formed a bond and I sat in on the, um, the conference with the other special needs teacher in fifth grade. And she was saying, do you realize that we're not, you're not going to have to follow a strict program where if you do these things, you're going to get rewarded. You're, we're just going to let you be an adult and you will um, you know, do what you need to do. And he was fine with that. And then she said, uh, and we won't, you won't be having Miss Mixit as your assistant. He started crying, a fifth grader crying because I wasn't going to work with him. And I, I said, uh, when uh, when I see you, I said, what did I tell you? When, when you get me upset, what do I do? He goes, you frown. And I said, and what do I do when you make me happy? He said, you smile. I said, so you're going to, what are you going to do for me? And he goes, I'm going to make you smile. And he, I would be walking down the hallway and he would just, in front of all the other fifth graders, just come up and hug me, and which I thought was remarkable because usually, you know, fifth graders, they don't want anything to do with, but uh he was probably uh, one of my favorite students. And from what I understand, he has, he was, he had gone through a lot in his home life, but they said he's doing really well in middle school. So I, and I love what I do. Uh, I'm not a morning person, so I don't have to be in school until like 12, 15, 345. So that's perfect for me. Uh, and it's just, Little pocket money, it's not much, but it's the, uh, I go there because I love the, the group of ladies that I work with. And it, it is a um, kind of an instant gratification position when you get rewarded right away when you see what you're doing. So that's well, and it what really I'm speaks doing. to how, how well you connect with people and how that makes you a great leader at Jersey Sound and just that, you, that you're so personable and that you really can you know, make a connection with one person and make them feel special. So it, it's, it's neat that you also, that, you know, we get to see that mm -hmm. through the forest lens, but it's also cool to hear about it out in the real world uh, and how you do that. Cool. So did you sing in high school or college? No, never sang in um, high school or, uh, or college. In um, high school, I played the violin and I initially when I went, so I went to West Catholic Girls High School, but I had to go to Little Flower, which was in North Philadelphia, to um, audition for the nuns. I think they were the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I had to audition for the nuns to be in the orchestra. And what made me do that, um, my sister is six years older than me. I went to her high school graduation. It was a convention hall, the old convention hall in Philadelphia. And they played uh, Rhapsody in Blue the orchestra. And I fell in love with that music and said, you know, I, I, that's what I want to do. I want to play in the orchestra. So that's why I went. And when I interviewed, um, the nun said, oh, you have, look at your fingers. And I went, oh, I bite my finger now. She goes, no, you have flat fingers. They'd be really good for the violin. And I said, but I want to play the clarinet. And uh, I think she told a little white lie because she told me I, I was, I couldn't play the clarinet because I had braces, which liar, liar, pants on fire. So I took the violin and after a few weeks, I went back and I said, my neck hurts from playing the violin. Can I play the bassoon? Because um, I guess she was a year older than me. Her name, was, I don't even remember, her name was Bunny and she used to play Alfred Hitchcock. Boom, 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 boom. So I said, I want to play the bassoon and she went, you can't play the bassoon, but you can play the French horn. I went, 
now I guess I'll play the violin and I stayed with the, the violin through high school, but, and I played the piano at home, but never, never sang. In fact, the only time I did sing, um, the, the restaurant now is called Racks, but when it opened, I think it was called Taylor's and my daughter was bartending there and they had a karaoke night. So she said, mom, why don't you come up? So I go up there and uh, I'm listening to all these you know, young girls going up, real pretty voices that are singing. I think, oh shit. And I get up there and I, I sing Missy Elliott's Work It. Well, halfway through the song, even the kitchen help came out. I mean, they, everybody came out of the kitchen. I, I, when I was done, I got a standing ovation. I was invited back. The following week, my daughter made herself a shirt that said, my mom knows how to work it. And each week they would have me sing, work it. Uh, at the end of the I think it was like a maybe a four or five week program. They they gave prizes for first, second, and third, and I got an honorable mention for work. It so I think it was a gym bag I won, but that was the only singing I did till um, chorus. Well, and as a music educator, you know all that violin training is so good for your ears. So I'm not terribly shocked that you ended up, fill, you know, diving into the fold and uh, being able to use that musical knowledge because you've got a lot of it. Um, yes, I, in, in fact, high school, uh, I loved theory, music theory, and that was my goal when I graduated. I was going to um, teach music theory, and I went to, wanted to transfer, because I had started at community college, transfer my credits to Westchester, and something happened, and it didn't happen. But going back, I was always a clown in high school, too, with the nuns, and in music theory class, I sat in the back of the room, always carried on. And our final exam, I remember the nun coming back to me and she goes, I am so annoyed with you. I said, Why? And she goes, I wanted you to flunk and you got a 100. <laughs> but I, you know, I loved music theory. And one other thing that I did um, when I went, I worked at First Fidelity, and I said I was singing there, like doing a little songs, but um, gosh, just that quick, see that? I was gonna say something about singing there. And, oh, I was, I started as a drive-in teller and then a position opened up working for the regional vice president, which was secretarial. And I never had any commercial courses in high school way back when, when they did teach, um, you know, typing and shorthand. So I go for this interview with the regional vice president and his assistant and he knew me because he would come to the office and he heard me sing a couple. I used to sing when the Burger King was being built near our, our bank. I used to sing, eat a burger while you bank, do, 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 do. Just spend your time while you wait in line, eat a burger while you bank. And I went along like that. So uh, I'm talking in the interview and um, he says, are you going to sing for me? So I don't even know what I, I think I sang the drive-in song, which was la, 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 drive-in. That damn bell makes my head spin all the time. Working in the drive through is a crime. And I got the job. And I, I never, I, mean, I can remember the one day I was giving him a report. It was before computer. So everything was electric typewriter and white out. And I handed him the report and he went like this because of all the white out on it. But um, he hired me, even though I didn't even have it. It was a basically an administrative job. But you're also a customer service because you took all the complaint calls for the regional vice president and then all the problems with the managers. But um, I did sing there. I inter part of my interview. <laughs> That's a little fun fact. <laughs> oh man. And we're, we're so glad that you do sing still. Um, so like, how about your note, you know, your favorite Jersey sound regular rep repertoire song that we sing? Well, I love our contest package. And I think it's probably the best package since I've been there that we have. So that, you know, some enchanted evening and let's start tomorrow tonight. I love that. Regular rep repertoire, I love sing and I love go to distance. They're two of my favorite songs. And, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention for our viewers at home, go the distance we've learned entirely in lockdown. We got yes. a few weeks in and, um, I would say, I, you know, I would be happy to walk in when we're prepared and 
expect to sing it with my whole chorus, which is pretty pretty neat experience. Tell you, actually, being on lockdown, for me, uh, you actually have to take a little bit more accountability to learn it. And um, then I do my, every day I go for a walk and I have my, my group and eyes are on my phone and I'm singing. Oh, people want to think, oh, there goes that crazy lady talking to herself again, because I'm very animated when I sing too. But um, I, I love, I love singing. Um, and now it's, uh, of course, girls just want to have fun. But the, and my, my favorite holiday song is Happy Holidays. Even though we sing it ad nauseum, I just love that song. And I have to say, um, the, the team, and I think you're part of it, and Maggie, choosing the, the new songs that you've done, it's, you've done a phenomenal job because every one is like, gosh, it almost tops the other one. Although I don't think anything is going to top Go to Distance. I think that is probably the very best song that we'll ever sing. It yeah, really yeah, we certainly always keep looking, you know, to see not just what other groups have, are doing or have done, but we, we look to see what would be the next great fit for Jersey Sound. <laughs> and I think that's part of why we enjoy singing what we do. We really try to choose things that'll fit our identity and work for our singers. So, so thank you. We appreciate, we appreciate your feedback. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we're talking about, you know, that we sing a bunch, why why do you sing oh to quote one of my favorite quotes i don't sing because i'm happy i'm happy because i sing and it's the truth uh it does so much and this course the, when i joined this course i was going through a very dark time in my life and had i not joined jersey sand i probably wouldn't be singing barber shop today so i'm grateful that god led me to jersey sound and I'm grateful that I found something that I love doing, and I hope to do it until until I can't do it anymore. And I dread that day, but um, I just I just love to sing, and I love the connection that we make, not only with the sisters on the risers, but with the audience that we sing for. Um, I remember going to a nursing home with the other chorus and the one woman, she was all bent over in her wheelchair. And by the time we were done, her head was up, her foot was tapping. And I, I spoke to her afterwards and she said, I used to sing in a choir. And I mean, it's the connection that you make with um, your audience is um, something that can't be duplicated. And it's, it's not something that you can buy or artificially do it's got to be genuine and that's the other thing it talk about um instant gratification you get that when the people respond to the message that you're you're sharing when you sing yeah it's i have to agree with you 100 percent. just that that cycle of of feedback is just so invigorating and just even you know i you know and you do too we, we both come from instrumental performing backgrounds mm -hmm. it, you don't always get that same level no. but there's something about using your whole body as the instrument that really makes some sort of difference it's uh yeah it's it's very very gratifying and mm -hmm. um you talk about these amazing moments and um in our organization sometimes we call them like gold medal moments things that that you cherish moments like that um do you have one that you would like to talk about uh, probably the when i went to flash and it was a year that they had the yellow chorus and um you and i we were still i think you were part of jersey sound at that point yes only for a couple uh, months though or maybe like uh, a month and there were two songs um oh i think we just we did one it was yeah, um, I, I forget the world. other one i i I'm wanted to sing the world song but it was sitting on top of the world which i could not stand and um stephanie was the director and i only sat i saw stephanie when um i would go to friends and family and i would say that um because of the quality that Jersey Sound uh, performed at, uh, 
for me, maybe it was a little, um, it's like, well, I don't think I could ever sing for that chorus. And uh, I wasn't quite sure how Stephanie was as a director. And I remember we were in a little room and it was very, very uh, crowded. And it was mostly Jersey Sound members, which now I can understand why Jersey Sound members want to sing for Stephanie at Flash. And uh, she said something like, uh, she apologized for the close quarters and said, we'll have, a, um, we'll have a, a larger room tomorrow. It's conference room D. I don't know where it is. And I said, it's probably between C and E. And she went, who said that? And I went, and I did. And she was laughing. I went, wow, she's got a sense of humor. And then when she started to direct with her hands, and I was so used to, like, like you said, I went through high school, instrumental director, and her hands were so fluid and magic. And I, I went back to the room and I said to the, to the lady that I was rooming with, I'm gonna sing for her. So that's what brought me. Otherwise, I probably would never have sung for Jersey Santa. I wanna just do one more too, because my first year on the contest stage, when we were, and it was um, Jasmine Blues and Bandstand. And when we finished our second song, um, I literally broke down crying. And it wasn't a sad crying. It was almost like a, a feeling that I had never experienced before. It was an emotional high that, my God, we did this and we sounded awesome. And God, and then we won medals. I was so excited because I never won a medal before. And I was sitting next to Miranda and she said, we're getting another one. I went, another medal? I was like, wow. And I'm just so grateful that I had you know, that opportunity. And uh, I just love singing and I cannot wait till we're back on the risers again. Or at least in that parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sure, we will uh, be singing together in no time but uh i thank you so much for joining me today it's been a, absolutely a pleasure getting to to we sat, sat and hung out for a little bit before this mm -hmm. and, and uh getting to record this with you is just such a joy and uh thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll be back again with another interview real soon thank you hope to see you all soon